How's everybody today? Well, how are you? Good. Good. So, 42-yard touchdown. What was CJ supposed to do on there? What was what was the secondary? What was like the miscommunication? Maybe. Yeah, there was no miscommunication. We were in man-to-man -man coverage, and um, I think he was anticipating a deeper route concept based on what we had gotten earlier in the game and was playing off and you know should have been closer to the body. That's really what happened. From a coaching standpoint, what does it tell you about a player when he can come back and then make that interception that he did after that? In, uh, super encouraged, based on you know what had happened you know prior to that. Um, but for him to go up and compete for that ball in a critical situation in the game uh, was phenomenal by him and and you know making that play for us. You had two high point interceptions in that game. Um, how much do you think that discourages opposing offenses from from going deep? Or maybe going for 50 50 balls? I'm not sure. Uh, I'm just glad that our guys were on the winning end of those balls. And um, hopefully, we continue to play in a, in a lead position. We talk about with the corners being in a lead position, and they were in lead positions on that play and went up and, and made the plays for us. Going back to CJ for a second, I know that he's sort of, you know, been through it and had this sort of bounce back season for him. Is it? Was that a play that he would make last year in terms of when something bad happened? Would he have been able to bounce back? Or have you noticed a sense of maturity in him this year that wasn't there last year? Yeah, definitely. Again, you know, he's a relatively young player. He's He is maturing each and every week, each and every game, the more experience that he gets. But I do believe he would have bounced back last last year even and made that same play. So it's it's been encouraging. And, uh, and he had a really, really good day of practice yesterday, making some plays on the ball. The uh, Bengals have given up the second most sacks in the league, but Joe Burrow is still like a top five passer in almost every statistical category. How rare is it to to see a quarterback be able to deal with those type of hits and then come back unfazed? Yeah, he's uh, he's he's a phenomenal quarterback. Uh, he he has total command of that offense, and I think that's where it starts. He he commands the offense. He knows exactly uh, what he's trying to get accomplished. Uh, where he's going with the ball. He has a great rapport with his, with his receivers, and he gets rid of the ball really quick. Tiff, on your other hand, you guys don't have a lot of sacks, but you get a lot of pressures. What's going to be the key to, to change that, or does it need to change? Yeah, just based on you know whatever the game plan is that particular week, David, it's, it's obviously we, we'd love to get the sack production. Um, there's times when we have to pressure, we pressure. Uh, there's times when we need to play coverage, we play coverage. So it's just based on the matchups, who we're playing. Uh, and when I say matchups, it's it's the totality of the entire offense, the offensive line, the wide outs, the quarterback, the running backs, all of those things come into effect in terms of how we're going to attack an offense. Well, given that Cincinnati has had some inconsistencies in the offense, does that give you like the more incentive on wanting to go after them more? Uh, not, not, not particularly. It's just a matter of, you know, how what how their 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 offense is structured, uh, how we how we plan on attacking them from a standpoint of coverage, as much as anything, as well as what we're doing with the front, whether we're pressuring or not pressuring. It's really just based on, uh, and and again, uh, he he gets the ball out pretty quick, you know, pretty quick. So um, you have to really, really be calculated in terms of how you want to attack them. They're the type of team that even with Jamar Chase out, they have a guy in T. Higgins who, who can do pretty much anything, and then Tyler Boyd, who's a technician. How do you combat those guys while also preparing for maybe somebody you haven't seen before? Yeah, sure. The, you know, First of all, T. Higgins, um, great catch radius, goes up, gets the football. Uh, Fantastic hands, 50-50 uh, guy in terms of you know going up high pointing it, uh, which is a challenge. And then and then Boyd, you know I, I can't remember the last time he dropped the ball. Uh, he has fantastic hands, runs great routes, savvy. And both of those guys have uh, tremendous rapport with the quarterback, and he and he trusts them. Uh, just in terms of who would take that other role, and uh, you know, who we haven't really seen that much on tape is, is yet to be seen, so to speak. And uh, we just got to be prepared and be ready, you know, for somebody else on their roster to step up. Al, Brian was talking the other day, and he, he said he kind of took the blame for that last play, the Mariota scramble, 
Um, what did you see on that play from him, or what should he have done differently there? Yeah, we 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 had him assigned, and 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 really at the end of the day, Darren, we 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 missed a tackle is what it came down to. So um, you know, I appreciate that that Brian takes responsibility for that. Um, but at the end of the day, we, we had a, what we felt was a good call. They felt it was a good call, and we just didn't execute at the, at, at the level we should have. What are the things he's got that he can continue to get better at? What are the things you can see him developing in years to come? Yeah, just continue to play with his hands. Uh, you know, that's been a big emphasis for him. And uh, rushing the pass or playing in a run game, just, as, just everything, you know, there's all the players, there's something to improve upon on a day-to-day, -day, daily basis. Uh, Brian's a, a, a fantastic player. We love him. Glad we have him here. And, um, you know, we just continue to preach to him fundamentals and, and getting better at the little details each and every day. What does that look like for him? I mean, what is he, what's he like in that situation when you're trying to do granular instruction with him? Yeah, his, his football IQ is, is, is really high, and he understands the game at a high level, not just his position, but some of the positions around him. So when you talk to him, it's, it's like you're almost talking to another coach in the sense that he gets it. Typically, you say something to Brian one time, and he understands what you're trying to get done and, and what you're trying to get accomplished. And he also has really good ideas in terms of what about if we you know, try it this way or, or that way. Again, seeing it through you know, the player's lens and, and how they see things. With Chin out for another week and kind of the uncertainty around Justin Burris with a concussion right now, what is the plan at safety and how confident do you feel in that group right now? Very confident. You know, Miles uh, Hartsfield's been starting for us uh, at safety and at nickel. So, you know, we feel confident in Miles and Xavier. We feel pretty good there. What is the plan, you know, if Justin can go? Like, who are some other guys that could fill in that spot? Well, you have uh, Sean Chandler, champ, uh, who's getting reps. And has played for us. He played for us last week in the game. Sam Franklin. Uh, those are all guys that have played for us uh, and done a good job. And they understand what we're trying to get done. They understand the system. Sam's got kind of a quirky personality. But what's he like to coach? <laughs> Sam's fun to coach. He's uh, uh, he's well liked by his teammates. Well liked by his coaches. Uh, tremendous athlete. Uh, can play and do a lot of different things for you just from an athletic standpoint. Uh, so he's a pleasure to be around. And, um, and he's improving and continuing to get better in his role as on the defense as well as special teams. He's kind of like a hybrid player, like a safety linebacker. Mm -hmm. Is it tough to kind of convert or find a, a home for a guy when he's like deeper on the depth chart? No, I, I, you know, when you look at the NFL, if you're, so to speak, in a backup type of role, you have to be able to play multiple positions just because of the sheer number of how many spots you have on a roster. So, you know, when Sam first came here, um, I was working with him as kind of a big nickel outside linebacker, and then he transitioned to safety. Uh, he's played the dime package for us in years past. He's played nickel for us all throughout OTAs and training camps. So his flexibility, because of his size and athleticism, is a plus for us. You, uh, I got Sam, you saw the team turned down a while back two first round picks for, for Brian. What makes him that valuable for a building block moving forward? Yeah, that's that's not in my in my realm, David. You know, I'll I'll leave that to to, well, to that. Yeah. I mean that but just what makes him that that highly respected where you want to turn down that to you know well, Brian Brian's a, a really good football player and I'm and I'm glad that we have him and I'll leave it at that. He's 24. That's not normally an age where guys can, you know, galvanize a locker room and be a leader. Is, is in your experience, is that kind of uh, the case, or is he just kind of fitting the mold of, of the leaders that you've had in the past? I think um, I don't think I know. Brian has grown as a as a player over the last two and a half plus seasons now. Uh, so he's. He's more confident in his ability. He's played in a lot of games. Uh, he understands the pro game better now and understands you know, the things that, that, that are being asked from him just from a player standpoint as well as um, becoming, as a young player, one of our veteran players. Uh, Al, going back to the 47-yard touchdown, 
after the catch, what would you have liked to see Ben executed better? Just the entire defense finish. And how do you coach that up? Well, it's just we, we just we have to finish. Um, no change of speed, guys running to the ball and finding a way to get them down. Okay. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Um, different subject. From a penalty standpoint, how would you evaluate your defense right now? I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged by uh, what they're doing. I, we actually, I just spoke to them about that. I think it's been two or three weeks uh, where we've not had any defensive penalties. Uh, which is awesome, and, and that's what we want to continue to do, continue to play penalty-free and give ourselves an opportunity to get off the field. Can you expand on that a little bit, just on how, how challenging that is for a defense to accomplish what you just stated? It that? is, it is, and, and, you know, there's a lot of things in terms of, you know, pass rush and, and not, you know, um, attacking the quarterback late. There's things on the, the edges of the defense. DPIs downfield, all of those things play into account. And, I, and that to me is a sign of a smart football team and also guys executing the techniques that we're asking them to execute. So that's been, that's been a plus for us. You got JC back this week. Just kind of how much of a difference does he make on the field? What did you see in Atlanta? Yeah, having him back is, is a little bit of a safety blanket. Obviously a uh, tremendous football player, uh, tremendous cover, coverage player. Uh, multiple position type player who can blitz, who can play coverage, who can fit the run game. So he gives us some flexibility. Who aren't we asking about on your defense that is playing a big role that we we really don't give a lot of publicity to? Yeah, uh, Miles Hartfield, because uh, he's a multiple position player. He's he's durable. Uh, again, he can play down in the box and does a, a, a fantastic job for us. He can play back deep. And, um, you know, he's a guy that kind of is one of, the, uh, one of our glue guys on the defensive side of the ball. What have you seen from Tay Hayes and his limited uh, snaps on defense? Uh, a guy that when, when he's called upon, he's ready to go play. And he executes uh, when, he's, when he's been in the game. Um, his name hasn't been called, so that's a really good thing for us, I think. Uh, but, but he's a guy that comes to work every day, has a smile on his face, is eager to learn. And uh, when his opportunity comes, uh, he's ready to step up. With him and Miles, nickel is such a, a weird position because you have to basically do everything. Um, in, in your experience, how much does actual playing time help that player become better against the run, better in coverage, et cetera? I, I, I think the more reps that you get, the better you become as a player. And uh, Obviously, game time reps are, are critical in terms of a player's development. And some, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. And, you, and hopefully, you win more than you lose. And then you learn from the mistakes that you made. And then you can go out and conquer new mistakes and continue to build that player uh, and, his, and his library of knowledge and reps. OK, thanks, guys. Appreciate it.